So we got uh, another unboxing here. Uh, I've got a Land Raider Crusader slash Redeemer for my Blood Angels. Um, I'm going to be assembling it as a Crusader. So let's have a look what's in the box. If it will come off. Sorry about this. <laughs> Really exciting me trying to open a box with one hand, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Right. So, this is one side of the hull. We've got the outside of the Land Raider. This is the part you usually see. The uh, front, frontal sort of spatial area there. And then the vents at the back. Quite nice this one. Um, I do love my Land Raiders, as you probably noticed if you've seen my Blood Angel army. We then got the uh, front doors here. Uh, I will probably be gluing these shut, namely because I am incredibly lazy and don't want to paint inside. And it makes it a little easier for transportation. We've then got some of the tracks. These are all the tracks for the this side. So your, the entire thing will be in your one side of the one side of it. Then we've got the inside of the Land Raider down here. The various seats which it's got on the inside. This is the part which what most people don't see because again it's very hard to see this sort of detail even when it's built up and the doors are easy you're able to open the doors and such and then we got some lights here and here for the front and what looks like a sensor which goes in the front as well so then we go on to the next one so that's the main body of it, the main, main top uh, going from, the, from this end uh, this is probably going to be the big, the, this is the real big bit, so you need to pay special careful attention with this one. We've also got the uh, slots where the lights go in here, in the front. We've then got the exhaust, which goes on the back there. On the back of it, about, I forgot I had the camera in my hand then. So the exhaust will go on the back here. Uh, you have to bear with me because it's been a quite a while since I've assembled one of these. We then got the internal dividing part. This slots in between uh, with the engine parts. Lovely amount of detail. It's a shame that it usually almost never gets seen. Uh, this usually this goes in the middle part to sort of maintain structural rigidity, like many of the rhinos and etc. And that just keeps the uh, main thing confined and gives you something to paint if you paint the inside. So now we've got the bottom of the Land Raider. Not much to see other than possibly painting the words PTO on the bottom. My attempt to poor humour. Uh, we've got a hatch here. I think this is one of the side hatches maybe? No it's not one of the side hatches. What am I talking about? Um, you know, I'm not actually sure where this one comes from. Uh, just grab my other Land Raider, which I have here, ready. And I can't seem to see where that one goes, so we'll have a look a bit later on and I'll be able to let you know where that one went. Uh, then we've got the other half of the exhaust. This is the main part which most people will see. Uh, we then got more internal dividing parts. So, um, computer, computer parts and winch cables, etc., to help maintain structural rigidity. And then this part is the uh, frontal turret. So you have the main frontal turret, the assault cannon, and you've also got the sensor which goes in there. So that's that bit. And we get the fun part, the weapons. So we got the. Flamestorm cannons. 
from one side and from the other side and they're ammo tanks and feeders I do love Framestorm Cannons Strength 6 AP3 is just fantastic at killing almost anything but since I've already got one I'm going to be building the other Crusader so let's have a look at the Crusader parts so we got the Hurricane Bolters one side and one side and the other we then got the uh, Targeters which go on top well these ones on, those ones might go on the bottom actually then we got the Targeters for both of them for them uh, we then got the main parts which connect both of them so we got the mount which they're supported on to allow it to pivot we then got the locators which go on the top and then we got another little supporting part which I believe connects them all together so that it allows it to move freely we've then got the other half of the main chassis the most of this is exactly the same what we've seen already the only differences are is we've got two side doors the side doors are important because if I bring in my other redeemer here you'll notice that they've got four doors on each one which allows you to position the uh, weapons either forward or back or backward depending on which sort of weapon they are and what sort of outlay you want so these would be used to cover up the ones which you don't where you don't want the weapons to go um, I will probably be building my uh, Crusader Hurricane Bolters at the back and then we got the mechanisms to allow the front door to be open and close so we got the bar which keeps them all intact in place and then we got little cog cogs here which allow them to move freely again I will be gluing these shut so I I doubt I'll even use these in the model at all unless it's structurally required and then we got a couple little a few little more bits we got the assault launchers which go on the front of the Crusader we then got the all-important assault cannon love assault cannons you always want assault cannons where you can we then got a multi melter for pedal mounted ones I will be putting this on uh, because I love multi melters you can never have too many multi melters you then got the guards which go over the uh, the uh, pedal mounted weapons uh, sponson sorry and then you got the guard which goes over the hull weapon which is the assault cannon they then got the uh, turret mounts so these go in the play uh, where the where you want the weapon to be and these you would then mount the guns in the, these parts here you then got the mount for the central the uh, central gun there uh, you then got the side bits for the multi melter which go on the side there and you got the central part which will go on the middle I believe of one of the parts oh no it allows you it connects the assault cannon to the turret my mistake and then we got the uh, top and bottom of the uh, sponsons which allow it to move move about easily and then we got a couple accessories so we got a communication array here I may be using some of these as objective markers because I think they do make quite good objective markers you've then got another bit which you can mount the uh, uh, multi melter in and then you've got the multi melters shield which goes in front of it uh, telecom array it's a sensor dish you then got two halves of a uh, hatches which you can put over any hatches which you don't want open you then got a storm bolter although I don't know why anybody would want would equip a 
a uh, Crusader with a Storm Bolter, really. Unless they plan to move... Well, not even that, actually. You would always want a multi-melter, multi really. Because there's no real downside to having using a multi-melter. Uh, we've then got the parts to build one of the crew. So we've got two different types of torsos. One from standing up and one from him just poking his head out. Uh, this one will be used if he's holding the weapon. Otherwise, it will be this guy who's just sort of poking his head out the top. We've got his torso. His arms, if he's hold, to hold the uh, multi-melter or storm bolter. His shoulder pads. Two alternate heads here. If I zoom in on them. A base bare-faced one and a regular one. If I can find the thing again. Sorry about this, it's been a while since I've done any recording. There you go. Um, we got, then got the, a Hunter Seeker Missile. Uh, I won't be using this. I don't like using Hunter Seeker Missiles unless it's on an Ironclad. Because most of the time you're not going to get a chance to shoot it anyway. So. And we've got our smoke launchers. Definitely want them on. Then got our searchlights. I will be putting these on. Even though it will be a Blood Angel one, I do like to put these on because it does make them look better. Um, and if you've got spare points, it's always worth putting your putting some searchlights on most of your models. It's not bad for far, for a point each. And then we got some accessories. So we got some tow bars here and here. A little fancy plaque. Some uh, skulls with wings. They're not quite aquilas. A mountain of purity seals, and then another purity seal on its own. So, uh, the last thing is a monstrously big rule book, uh, rule book, uh, instruction book, because it is one of the most complicated uh, tanks that there is about at the moment. Showing how to build each variant, the main hulls, etc. So a grand total of 11 steps, so it is a, a big build. Um, I'm going to build this up, and then I will show you then. Well, I've finished assembling the Land Raider Crusader. And it it's a, it's a complicated build, I would ha I will admit. But it's not too bad. Uh, you know what I mean if you've ever assembled a Land Raider. It's just time consuming. Not particularly difficult at all. Of course I gave my Land Raider a multi-melter. I made it so that the multi-melter and the assault cannon can be removed for vehicle damage. The um, Hurricane Bolters. Uh, for some reason the one on the right is incredibly free moving as you can probably see. I've got no clue why that is. So I'll see what I can do with that one. And of course I glued the front door shut to save on painting and prob other problems like it coming open while I'm transporting etc. But it was a relatively easy build and one I enjoy good sign is that I've already got another three of them. So if I bring in, that takes me up to three, and if I bring in the other two that I have, it gives me one of each type of Land Raider now. So, I will see you all next time. Uh, take care.